What's going on, people? I figured I would talk about this just because, I guess, why not? You know, everybody and their mother is attacking uh, GameStop and their underlined issues as to why they think the company is closing. I have my own theories, and we've discussed them before. But I fully believe that GameStop, you could turn it around. I really do. Okay? We know who you are, GameStop. It's embedded in our heads. Okay, a lot of us kind of grew up with you uh, being where we would go buy a video game when we were a kid. So it's not like you're a Walmart, you're not a Target, you're not a Best Buy, you're not an electronics store, you're not a super center store where you can buy groceries, you're a gaming store. This formula is very easy, GameStop. Listen to me, okay? Digital distribution isn't hurting your bottom line as much as you want to believe it is. What's hurting your bottom line is your reputation and your complete incompetence and lack thereof understanding you have to grow with the times. And I know it's hard to do because GameStop, you are the most guilty when it comes to shitting on retro you are the most guilty when it comes to explaining the good and the bad within your own fucking products i was just at gamestop a little while back like i want to say sometime before uh this week even started so probably like middle of last week and somebody in there was talking about buying a playstation vita over the switch and the guy behind the counter didn't argue why the switch was better he didn't even try to say you really should buy a switch it's going to be cheaper in the long run it's more efficient than the damn vita is which is 100 percent real it's not going to cost you as much because if you buy a vita that's 150 and then you're going to want a memory card those things run really excessive even though the system has been declared dead by sony themselves those fucking memory cards are never going to be cheap they're just not and with the switch you can go ahead and buy a switch it's got 32 gigs built in so if you can't buy a memory card right then you can still play the game and have a save file i understand it's not 500 gigs i understand it's not a terabyte but at the same time, if this is a Christmas gift and all you can afford is one system and one game and that's it, you still have enough room on that internal memory storage that you can get like a Mario Kart 8 and have plenty of room. You can get Mario Odyssey and have plenty of room. A game like Splatoon 2, you have plenty of room. Nintendo games are compressed super small. So... I didn't hear him saying any of this to someone who was asking about the PlayStation Vita. These are things that I myself would bring up, even though I'm a huge Vita fan. I have my Vita. I play the Vita constantly. I would still bring this up to somebody. In fact, I remember when the PSP was a thing, me and the homie went to GameStop one day, and PlayStation had just launched their worst idea of all time. Excuse me, and it wasn't that it was a bad console. <laughs> Excuse me, it was because Sony does not understand fucking memory and what all digital fucking means. Because they go hand in hand. I could be all digital with my Xbox One at a 500 gig, I just wouldn't own anything. I could be all digital with my Switch at 32 gigs, I just wouldn't own anything. The memory is a starting point. It's not the end of the world I've argued this before but when you make a console especially a portable console memory is kind of a big issue okay from the game file sizes to the online store meaning digital content how extensive other features are on said system memory really comes into play for instance there's a video player on the PSP there's a camera which means they want you to be taking cam camera style, uh, type photos whether they be selfie with the internal camera pointing at you or just out in the world these files take memory space and i get it not that much 
But if you're only able to afford an 8 gigabyte fucking memory card because it starts getting really uncomfortable and even the 8 gig card is a little uncomfortable when you look at that price, it becomes really apparent and you really start debating on what is and what is not okay when you have a handheld device. And unfortunately, Sony did not think of that, which is why the Vita fails. I would never recommend a Vita over a Nintendo Switch. I would never do that. Because in the long run, you're gonna be paying more money for a less competent version of a better console. The uh, Nintendo Switch is a much more competent version of the PlayStation Vita. It has the better games, it has a bigger gaming catalog, it has a bigger and more proactive uh, install fan base for the Nintendo Switch. A lot of people like playing on it. I have more friends that have a Nintendo Switch than anything else, okay? So, with that, there's right there, just off of that alone, there's a bigger install base. So if online gaming is a thing that you really want to have, and you're going between the PlayStation Vita or the Switch, the Switch is the better option because there's been more Switches sold and more direct games involving, like you can get Fortnite on the Switch, you can't get that on the Vita. You can get uh, Dauntless on the Switch, you can't get that on the Vita. You see what I'm saying? There are games that are fundamentally made for core consoles that are actually workable, running decent ports on the Switch that you can play in handheld mode and that you can play online. Okay, I'm taking absolutely nothing away from the PS Vita. Again, I am a PS Vita owner and I do play the damn thing. So, it's not that I'm saying I wouldn't tell you to not buy a Vita. I'm just saying at the end of the day, if you're buying a gift, if you're buying a gift, if you are buying a gift for someone, and you are worried about the amount of money you are going to spend. You know this person wants this device, but it's going to cost you more money. And you realize, oh, I can buy them kind of the same thing in the Switch with a lot of the same here and there stuff. And it's going to cost me less money. And I don't have to worry about one key feature, Sony, which is internal memory. You're on board memory unit was a sack of shit that could barely hold for, uh, firmware let's be honest alright so with that being said like I said GameStop I was just in the store before Christmas and one of your employees did not inform the customer who he could have sold a Nintendo unit to for cheaper and it would have been a handheld. The, the Nintendo Lite, the Nintendo Switch Lite, is basically the PS Vita. Because you can't detach the Joy-Cons, and it's only portable. So this machine right here is $200. The Vita is $150 for just the machine itself. $50 less. So for $50 more, you get a fully working console. Comes with 32 gigs built into it already. So you can start buying video games to play. If that's what you want to do, which again, this is how I'm saying in the long run, Nintendo is cheaper and PlayStation just is overpriced garbage. Okay, that's what I'm getting at here. PlayStation, you are overpriced. The Vita is $150. An 8 gig, a 16 gig is going to run you anywhere between $25 to $55. So you've already made the difference and then some, depending on the size of the memory card just off of the memory card to be able to have memory. Something Nintendo gives you out of the fucking box. Even if I take and uh, trade in my Nintendo Switch right now and take the memory card out of it, there's still 32 gigs built into that bitch. The Vita has none. So they are forcing you to spend more money already. Then you have to go off of the game library. And I don't know about you, but it is very slim pickings between GameStops that I've recently visited just looking for portable games. Unless it's a Nintendo Switch game or a 3DS game in which GameStop, you're still a sack of shit for telling people to throw away the boxes to these type of games. This is why you're failing. You have 
all the potential to turn into the biggest retro store chain ever and a respectable one at that but you blatantly bastardized and beat your own ass to the point that it's like with me and Capcom where I'm not giving Capcom any money until they fix Resident Evil's pricing on Nintendo Switch you're doing the same thing it's not the customers don't want to come and give you their money they don't want to come to you they don't want to come in the store where they feel like they're a fucking number okay they don't want to come into a store and the guy behind the counter only know about Halo, Call of Duty, and Mario. Meaning the mainstream titles. And most of the time, they don't even fucking know what Mario is going on. Just to put it a little bit more bluntly to you, Xbox. Or not Xbox, but GameStop. Your uh, CSRs are almost completely fucking useless. And the ones that are useful, you get rid of. These are the only reasons you're struggling right now notice nothing i've said has anything to do with digital distribution all this has to do with in-store um interactions all of it all of it requires you to go into the store when gamestop your own employees are telling customers like me why should we keep carrying those consoles they don't make them anymore I, I, do you understand how ignorant your fucking CSRs are for saying in a store where used gaming is 90% of the fucking reason you exist, your own customer fucking service representative has no idea what the use of selling a console that Sony doesn't make anymore is. Well, considering Sony's not making that game console anymore, you can sell it at $150 fucking dollars. And guess where that $150 fucking dollars goes? To the GameStop fund. All of it. Not to Sony. Simple mathematics. It is shit like that, GameStop. That is why you're having problems. You could be the greatest retro store. You could have two stores in every city. Two stores. A modern day gaming store and the retro store you could have both of them and you could have your cake and eat it too if you would just completely change around what it meant what the experience was like going into a GameStop. if you quit disrespecting the community if you became a place where the community could go collectively hang out chit chat about games for a few minutes have a decent somewhat uh almost uh, friendship type relationship with the people behind the counter where it's like you go in and they just hey what's going on Jay I haven't seen you in a minute man what you been playing like that type of thing you dig what I'm saying and I know that seems like it's asking a lot but when you realize that people consistently come back it's not asking for much see what I'm saying because I used to have a friend at the GameStop in town I used to have a friend back before they uh had all these issues back when Nintendo Wii was around. I used to go in and the guy I would talk to, he knew I was a Nintendo fan. So every time I would go in there, me and him would chat about Nintendo. Somebody would walk over, make fun of Nintendo, and I'd have to say something, the dog, whatever they had in their hand. But at the end of the day, I kind of smiled about it and nobody got their feelings hurt. And we all had fun talking about games and how they're actually really good performing on the Wii and how I'm not completely stupid for liking the Wii and we would have some fun regardless of what I did or what I didn't pick up or whatever I would actually have information from going to GameStop now going to GameStop is like you walk in and your customer number 132,000 for the fucking uh, three hours I've been there like you're just a number to them you see what I'm saying this is why you're failing GameStop has nothing to do with digital distribution. Digital distribution just showed you how fucking incompetent you really are as a company. They held up a mirror to you, said this is what you are. You didn't like the imagery, but instead of changing it, you got worse. You got so much worse. Why are you buying these retro consoles and games if you're not flipping any of them? And if I have to go to your fucking website, which is almost as incompetent and 
as completely useless as your fucking physical stores. What is the point? I'm just pointing out the reasons. I'm not doing anything else. I'm staying completely out of, oh, it's because of the rise of the digital distribution. No, the only thing digital distribution has done has been making it to where you don't have to go to these places because their service and their, I mean, their customer service is piss poor and it's just easier to even go to a Walmart than a GameStop to tell one of them jackasses who know nothing outside of the air they breathe to go and pick up that one than go to GameStop. If you would change your entire motto, you would be fine. Again, GameStop, if you would change everything, reboot it completely on your company's aspect side, your outlook as a company showing you care more about numbers than the people who are the reason you're there. If you change this narrative to a good place to go to talk about games, no matter what system, to have people behind the counter who are actually informed on games, not just the next Call of Duty, because Call of Duty, man, if you had that, I guarantee you, GameStop, your numbers would go up. They're not going to go down. The reason a lot of people go to GameStop is because it's in the name, GameStop. If somebody wants a game, you should stop here. But a lot of times, a lot of people have questions, and that is where you start to crumble from the moment you walk in the door. Don't ever ask a GameStop employee for anything, because they only know what they're allowed to know, and they're robots with even more useless information than the Yellow Pages in 2019. I'm just saying, that's what it is, GameStop. That's the reason you're about to close. That's the reason you're about to fail. It has nothing to do with digital distribution. You are sitting on a gold mine and your attitude and your reputation are the reason you are going to close your fucking doors. Nobody's going to argue that. If you respectively turned at least one GameStop into a retro GameStop, creating a actual GameStop that differs from the one 10 minutes down the road, it gives reason to visit two different stores and creates a bigger chance that if you don't buy at the new one, you'll buy at the retro one. Or if you don't buy at the retro, you'll buy at the new. It's a better, bigger opportunity to guarantee at least one purchase between both fucking stores, which means, hey, money is being fucking made, which at the end of the day, GameStop is what you want to have happen. But what will not happen and what will continue to fucking happen is the more you sit on that gold mine of fucking old retro video games doing absolutely nothing but jamming each PlayStation 2 fucking controller up your ass, you're just going to go out of business. And it's no one's fault except your own GameStop. <laughs>